With two huge game modes, immense maps, and endless gameplay possibilities, there's a lot to cover when it comes to Epic's latest. Hi, I'm Brendan with The Leaderboard, and today we're counting down 107 facts you should know about Fortnite. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon to become part of the notification squad. Fortnite was developed by Epic Games, the team behind such legendary franchises as Unreal Tournament and Gears of War. It was co-developed by Polish studio People Can Fly, which previously had a hand in developing Bulletstorm and Gears of War Judgment. Fortnite debuted at the 2011 Spike Video Game Awards with a teaser trailer presented by Gears' father himself, Cliff Cliffy B. Blazinski. According to Epic Games creative lead Donald Mustard, the announcement was made a mere three weeks after the idea for the game was conceived. Although it plays out more like a Pixar short than a video game, Fortnite's cinematic launch trailer was, in fact, entirely assembled, lit, color corrected, and rendered in the game's engine, Unreal Engine 4. Fortnite was born out of an Epic Games desire to drastically shift gears to create a game that stood out from the company's previous offerings. When comparing it to Epic's previous titles, Blazinski described Fortnite as a world where you explore, you scavenge, you build, and ultimately, you survive. Fortnite was originally conceived during a company-wide game jam that occurred about a week after production on Gears of War 3 wrapped. The game jam produced many different prototypes for a variety of games, one of which led to the development of Fortnite itself. According to Tim Sweeney, Pixar films were a huge influence on the game's art style. The game's visual style was meant to emphasize the focus on good old-fashioned fun, as opposed to something huge in scope and highly competitive. Before taking creative cues from the likes of Toy Story and The Incredibles, the game originally took on a more realistic post-apocalyptic art design, like that of the 2009 film The Road. The design was reworked after the developers found the former style to be, quote, depressing. The game's story centers around an event that has caused 98% of the Earth's population to mysteriously vanish. The remaining 2% suffer under storm cloud covered skies that drop an endless slew of zombified monsters known only as husks. Survivors have figured out how to construct storm shields, which guard against storm clouds and husk attacks, and allowed survivors to build fortified safe havens. You, the player, are a commander of one of these bases. You're tasked with venturing out into the world to retrieve resources, rescue survivors, and also ultimately find a way to return the world to its former glory. Producer Zach Phelps said that one of Epic's top goals was to create a game that was complex yet accessible enough that just about any player could pick it up. As a result, the base game mechanics like shooting and building are very straightforward. Though the team behind Fortnite was significantly smaller than that of your average AAA team, Epic founder Tim Sweeney said that the game cost more to make than the very first Gears of War, which cost $12 million. Darren Sugg served as Fortnite's lead visionary and creative director. Sugg joined Epic back in 2012 and inherited the director's chair early on in Fortnite's production. When asked to classify the game by genre, Sugg described it as a cooperative action building game. The game's development team initially consisted of just 35 people, a number that pales in comparison to AAA shooters like Call of Duty and Halo, which typically require hundreds of dedicated team members. At Epic Games, employees are typically allowed to choose the projects they like to work on, and Fortnite has proven to be a popular choice. Many employees have moved over to the Fortnite team, with some people joining the company just to work on Fortnite. Epic designed Fortnite so that there's more than one way to succeed. Players can complete missions and survive in a variety of ways. If you don't have the patience for building forts or the strategic chops to build effective traps, Gears of War style shooting and scooting will suffice. If you're skilled enough, that is. The developers work to differentiate themselves from the survival horror genre by making their game action-packed and hopeful. This is the reasoning behind calling their main characters heroes as opposed to survivors. It's also why the game's heroes are strong enough to easily take down a horde of goofy-looking zombies. In earlier builds of the game, the player had to construct each individual piece of a structure by selecting parts through a UI that resembled a spreadsheet. Materials also had varying properties depending on what they were made of. This interface was simplified to make the transition between surviving and building more seamless and fun. The day-night cycle was originally faster and more intense in earlier builds of the game, but it stressed out the testers, so Epic not only lengthened the cycle, but also incorporated more features, like scavenging and exploration, into the game's sandbox to make the day cycles more meaningful. At one point in development, the player could grow crops to feed themselves and their teammates. This feature was scrapped when the team realized the player had enough to worry about between holding off the zombies and building fortifications. Fortnite was the first ever Epic game to utilize the newest iteration of their in-house engine the Unreal Engine 
4. This revamped engine has been used by Microsoft Studio The Coalition for Gears of War 4. Though the final game runs on Unreal Engine 4, quite a few early playable Fortnite prototypes and presentations were built with the previous iteration of the engine, Unreal Engine 3. Much like Minecraft, Fortnite's maps are procedurally generated, meaning that many of the level's elements will randomly generate as the player explores the world. This provides a unique experience, ensuring that no two play sessions are ever the same. One of the biggest challenges the developers faced was finding a subtle way to let players know which objects contain materials that could be harvested. Their solution was to add a tiny weak point spot to interactive objects in order to decrease the amount of time players would spend harvesting. The game's art style was also managed by Pete Ellis, who has been with Epic since 2005. Fortnite was a huge shift in tone and style for him as he had previously worked on darker and grittier Epic titles like Unreal Tournament 3 and Gears of War. Lead animator Matthew Russell was responsible for creating the game's Pixar quality animations. He has feature-length animated films like Ant Bully and Jimmy Neutron Boy Genius under his belt. When transitioning from gritty and realistic visuals to a more stylized art style found in the final game, artists would take the old realistic aspects and import them into Photoshop. From there, they would recolor them with brighter, livelier colors and even warp the features with deformers to exaggerate them and give even the most mundane props like a fire hydrant more character. The team labored over every detail in Fortnite. They added visual interest to buildings and street signs through flashy designs and funny names, and even included places from their own lives. One of the artists built a German techno club because he loves electronic music, and that's where he'd want to spend the apocalypse. The artists worked to give each character a distinctive silhouette so that players could identify an incoming character from a distance and prepare for the interaction accordingly. The game Zombie Horde was designed to look like cartoonish versions of monsters from classic horror films, like Critters, Poltergeist, and George A. Ramiro zombie flicks. According to Cliff Blashinsky, the game's troll enemy type was built to be a manifestation of everything he hates about the internet. I mean, it's all there in the name. The team used old Looney Tunes cartoons as reference when determining how the game's characters would move and act. The animators used the Devil May Cry series as a touchstone for combat animations and physics. The influence is most apparent in the movement of the melee attacks, and in the way that clothes and hair move. Though the animation is very fluid, it didn't use motion capture like many modern games. Instead, the team used good old keyframe animation for every movement in this game. The animators had a role to make the movements as exaggerated as possible, quote, until they break. Upon reaching that point, animators would dial it back, but just by a little bit. Unlike Minecraft, Fortnite features simple physics. Structures can't just magically float above the ground like in Minecraft, if they're not connected. Oh, if they're not connected, they'll break apart. But this does make demolishing structures far easier. The developers also challenged themselves to make sure every aspect of the game is the perfect mix of realistic and cartoony. They struggled to achieve that balance the most with the building mechanic. The enemy AI grows progressively smarter or dumber depending on how you play the game. If you rely on the same old defenses and traps time and time again, the AI will figure out ways around it. Players that closely study the game's enemy variants will be rewarded handsomely. If you pay enough attention to the mannerisms of the Smasher, for example, you'll learn how to identify them before they arrive, how they attack, and what kinds of fortifications they tend to target. This research, in turn, should make their weaknesses obvious. The game originally allowed individual player ownership over a game world, much like in Minecraft. However, this proved irksome to players that didn't own the session, as their inventory would not carry over into it unless they were the host. Late into development, Epic changed it so that they would host every game, allowing the players to maintain their personal progress throughout every play session. The musical score for Fortnite was composed by Rom DePrisco. DePrisco has contributed to the scores of over 30 video games, including Mass Effect 2 and Epic's very own Unreal Tournament 3. Fortnite was originally filled with 8-bit music and sound cues, but with the exception of Darren Sugg, everyone felt that it didn't quite fit the visuals and vibe of the game. Epic made it their mission to make everyday items far cooler than their real-world counterparts. Among these enhancements are rocket-powered sledgehammers and electrified axes. After years of speculation as to what kind of business model the game would be taking, Epic finally announced that Fortnite would be free to play, in an article published in Game Informer in its May 2014 issue. Fortnite wasn't designed to be free to play from its inception. It was only after the development team realized that they had many ideas that they could implement into the game over time that they realized the game lent itself well to the F2P 
RP genre. Like just about every free-to-play game, Fortnite contains microtransactions. However, unlike most free-to-play games, you will be able to earn all the items within the game without spending a penny, though it'll take you some time. Fortnite is Epic's first attempt at a free-to-play game. To avoid the dreaded pay-to-win model that many F2P games tend to fall into, Epic studied the free-to-play models in League of Legends and Team Fortress 2 to make sure that those with deeper wallets didn't have a significant advantage. Though it was a stressful decision, Epic decided not to enlist the help of a bigger publisher, and instead opted to self-publish Fortnite. Their main motivation was to maintain their own vision and philosophy. Some gamers have been confused by the fact that while Fortnite eventually became free to play, it was initially released as a paid download and a paid physical disc. According to Darren Sugg, the only reason Epic released a physical disc whatsoever was because Sony required them to do so. Sony cited a statistic that said two-thirds of gamers in Europe still bought physical copies of games in 2017. The physical copies of Fortnite were published by Gearbox. Gearbox had recently published the remastered version of People Can Fly's beautiful love child with Epic, Bulletstorm, Full Clip Edition. In addition to adding new weapons and customizable skins, the team behind Fortnite wants to add more character classes after the final build officially launches, allowing for more diverse styles of play. The game features a whopping 116 heroes. According to Zach Phelps, you can acquire them all over the course of approximately 500 to 600 hours of play, minimum. The meta progression system present within Fortnite, known as Home Base, was based directly off the headquarters system found within the XCOM games. Epic held its first alpha for the game, cleverly titled Online Test 1, from December 2nd, 2014 to December 19th, 2014. A second test ran from March 24th, 2015 to April 14th of the same year. The purpose of these early tests was to make sure all the basic systems were working and to establish a baseline for how people play in order to improve the game accordingly. As of the time this video was created, there are currently two game modes featured within Fortnite, the player versus environment save the world mode and the more competitive player versus player battle royale mode. The latter is the fresher of the two modes. It was released during Fortnite's early access launch. Battle Royale and Save the World aren't just two separate game modes, Epic considers them to be separate products altogether. The two modes play completely differently from one another, with significant different rules and gameplay balances. The decision to split Fortnite's modes into separate products was partially inspired by the game H1Z1, which features the original H1Z1 Just Survive, and the second iteration, H1Z1 King of the Kill. Much like Fortnite's Battle Royale, this game was also deeply inspired by Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. Save the World is a cooperative game mode that focuses on exploration, scavenging items, crafting weapons, building bases, and of course, shooting evil monsters with a thirst that can only be quenched by your blood. Epic Games founder Tim Sweeney describes the mode as Left 4 Dead meets Minecraft. The base game was heavily influenced by a variety of games, from smartphone apps to the likes of Destiny, Warframe, and the previously mentioned Minecraft. Save the World incorporates a variety of mission types that take advantage of every corner of Fortnite's gameplay. One mission type will have you rescue civilians, while another may have you build a particular structure, and of course it's also got a version of Horde Mode where you build up your defenses before flipping a switch that summons wave after wave of husks for you to beat back. Quite a few Epic employees behind Fortnite Save the World Mode had a hand in creating Gears of Wars' signature Horde Mode. They even expanded upon the concept with ideas they had previously wanted to implement into Gears, but couldn't. The maps became smaller and smaller over time, but not because of technical limitations. Some maps were simply too large for four-player cooperative experiences, as playtesters would often lose track of their teammates and, by extension, neglect teamwork. Battle Royale mode was made standalone and free to play on September 26th, 2017, meaning it does not require the base game. Battle Royale is a massive mode that supports up to 100 players with a simple yet chaotic goal, kill until you are the last person with a pulse. The twist is that each player parachutes onto a random spot on the map with nothing but a pickaxe. They must mine resources to each build their own means of survival. The Battle Royale game mode was born from Epic Games staff's love for Battle Royale game types. Blue Hole Studios' famous game Player Unknown's Battlegrounds was not only an inspiration for the game mode, but a foundation upon which it was built. Despite loving the homage, the game's Battle Royale mode drew criticism from Blue Hole Studios, the development team behind PUBG. Blue Hole's vice president and executive producer Chan Han Kim claimed that the studio was investigating Fortnite and contemplating taking legal action against Epic Games. Fortnite's Battle Royale mode was never intended to see the light of day. It began as a fun little experiment conducted by Epic's Unreal Tournament team, which was fiddling around with the game's engine 
Dungeon while the core Fortnite team worked on the game Save the World mode. Save the World isn't currently free in the Early Access version, but it will be free to play after the final build is released in 2018. While Battle Royale modes tend to be more of a PC platform tradition, Fortnite's Battle Royale mode marks the first time such a mode has been achievable on a console, in this case the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One. Battle Royale rewards the player with in-game currency to buy loot crates. Loot crates feature more cosmetic items, nothing that influences gameplay. The amount of currency you earn is dependent on your skill level and how well you do during the match. Aside from the typical level ups found in every competitive online shooter ever, Battle Royale features competitive season levels that will reset after a certain period of time. The first season had a level cap of 100, and allowed the player to display their level on their banner. The season levels provide more than superficial bragging rights, allowing players to obtain items unobtainable by any other means. For example, the first season granted level 10's unique seasonal banner, while level 25's were rewarded with a unique seasonal glider. Seasonal levels can be boosted by participants participating in daily challenges. New challenges are provided each day, and the player will be able to have up to three active challenges in total. Battle Royale features two leaderboards, division leaderboards and friends leaderboards, but no one should get too cocky because these bragging boards reset every Wednesday to keep everyone on their A game. Division leaderboards consist of a group of 50 active players competing against each other to see who will take the number one spot. Every Wednesday, you'll be assigned a brand new division, with a fresh batch of players. Each map type places you in different divisions. While Battle Royale is free to play, it isn't really free on Xbox, as it still requires a paid gold subscription. On the other hand, PlayStation users do not have to be Plus members to access the mode. Epic toyed with the idea of utilizing drivable vehicles within early prototypes of Battle Royale, but cut them out due to some balancing issues. They have said they are interested in revisiting the idea in the future. Ready for some secrets? If you pre-ordered the Super Deluxe or Limited Editions of the game, you are granted two Epic in-game defenders, one of which is a reference to the 2017 film The Dark Tower, based on a series of books by Stephen King. The defender is a male named Idris who goes by the title of Gunslinger. Actor Idris Elba plays a character referred to as the Gunslinger in the film. Buying a Founders Pack on PlayStation 4 allows you to receive exclusive PlayStation Hero characters. They're dressed in clothes with the same color blue that covers much of the PlayStation 4's marketing. Near Lonely Lodge, you can find a bunch of cars stacked to resemble a person, a clear reference to the popular Transformers franchise. Additional tidbit, if you manage to parachute onto his head, you can find a treasure chest. Where does the battle bus go after dropping everyone off? If you head to a hill on the curve of a river between Greasy Grove and Salty Springs, you'll find it as crash landed on its side. It is also the spawn on site of not one, but three gold chests. Between Retail Row and Lonely Lodge is a big red barn. If you land on the roof of this barn at the start of the match, you can smash through it to find two gold chests in the attic, along with some vehicles below that to harvest for additional metal. Southwest of Tomato Town, you can find a tunnel. Within this tunnel, you'll find a brown car. Upon smacking the wall next to this car and breaking it down, you will find a secret treasure room. Atop a tall mountain between Greasy Grove and Salty Springs is a tree larger than any other on the map. Not only is it surrounded by a few gold chests, Chests, the tree itself is destructible and can provide you more than enough wood to last you the entire match. Near the bottom right of the map between Fatal Field and Moisty Mire, you'll find a pile of trucks that you can land atop to earn anywhere from one to three golden chests. You can also scrap the car pile for more than enough metal. Let's get into character classes. To put it simply, the Outlander is the scavenger of the group. They excel at finding the supplies you need to build your fortifications and the ingredients you'll need to craft other useful things, like weapons and explosives. If you prefer to wage war on the Husk's Marcus Phoenix style, the soldier class is likely your go-to. As the name implies, these guys are your team's first line of defense. They tend to shoot husks first and gather supplies and build later. If you got a need for speed, the ninja class is for you. They're the fastest class in the game and are just as likely to outrun a horde of husks as they are to slice right through them like a hot knife through butter. They've also mastered the art of the double jump. If you prefer creating over destroying, the constructor class will suit you best. They specialize in creating structures that not only keep husks out, but also look nice and homey. To be more specific, they can build and repair things quickly and more efficiently than their more bloodthirsty counterparts. The most common enemy you'll see throughout the game are the husks. While they're the lowest tier in terms of threat, the tables turn as soon as their numbers increase and they overwhelm you. Pitcher husks are pretty good at supporting the lowered level threats. As their name and baseball pitcher getup suggest, these guys can keep their distance and attack you with bones from longer ranges, making them a pain for the classes like the ninja. 
Exploding husks charge towards your base while carrying highly flammable propane tanks on their backs. The tanks detonate upon making contact with your base. Try timing your shots on these guys when they're standing near a lot of enemies. Much like the pitchers, flingers are ranged attackers, but unlike their lower tier counterparts, these guys hurl live zombies into your base. Be sure to keep all corners of your base covered and upgraded so that this can't happen. There is, unfortunately, one more ranged zombie worse than both the pitcher and the flinger combined. The red hot lobber husks are undead mortar tanks, hurling explosive flaming heads at your base at a high arc. The impacts are so devastating that they can take down a well-fortified three-story base within minutes. Just as there are ninja players, there are ninja zombies as well. And they're as troublesome as they sound. Not only can they dodge your attacks, but they're also capable of climbing up walls and infiltrating structures with ease. If none of these enemy types creep you out, the Smasher will certainly do the trick. It's a rampaging, hulking monster that relentlessly charges you and can tear through both players and heavily fortified bases like tissue paper. Like Gears of War 3, Fortnite features themed events based on real world holidays. The first occurred in October of 2017 with a Halloween themed update titled Fortnite Mares. The update featured everything from Halloween themed custom skins to seasonally appropriate weapons. According to producer Zach Phelps, Epic found that the game tested exceptionally well with couples. He stated that it was not just due to the team dynamic, but the diverse roles and gameplay each class offers. Everything from shooting to exploring to building, there's no one way to play the game. What began as an experimental mod within Epic Games became a literal overnight success, with the game's battle royale mode accumulating 1 million players within the first 24 hours after it officially launched. Fortnite was on track to become one of the most successful games in Epic's history. So many players started playing the game upon the early access launch that Epic had to act quickly to adjust the servers to accommodate the unprecedented number of players. Not only does the game look a bit like Team Fortress 2, it also aspires to have its longevity. Prior to the game's official launch in 2018, Darren Sugg said that he had a plan to provide Fortnite with consistent consistent content updates for not one, not three, but up to five years after its launch, with the potential for more if the game continues to exceed expectations. In September of 2017, some Xbox players were surprised to discover that they were facing off against PlayStation 4 players, proving that Fortnite was capable of cross-platform play. Unfortunately, this was a happy accident, and Epic immediately shut it off when they realized it was happening. When asked about the mishap, Xbox head honcho Phil Spencer stated on Twitter that he'd wished Epic had left the feature on. The Halloween update introduced the Pumpkin Rocket Launcher, a weapon that has an unintended and hilarious secondary function. If you angle your shot right below a fellow squad mate, you can send them for a ride across the map via your rocket. Being the cool dudes they are, Epic acknowledged the glitch but said that they would not patch it out. Zach Phelps has said that the Fortnite team takes feedback very seriously, and has even listened to requests for new game modes altogether. They fielded requests for survival modes and something akin to Destiny's raids. All are being taken seriously by the developers. While they haven't created created material specifically optimized to build tree forts, Epic has stated that fans discovered how to do so on their own. You just need the knowledge and the patience to build the tree house of your dreams. Despite numerous requests from the community, Epic has no intention of adding a first person mode for the time being. They had previously experimented with it and came to the conclusion that it didn't quite fit the gameplay design. On July 26, 2017, Epic Games announced that Fortnite had nabbed over 500,000 digital pre-order sales. By August 2017, the game itself had accumulated over 1 1 million players, with an additional 9 million having joined the fray by the release of the game's Battle Royale mode. Hey, we did it! Once again, I'm Brendan, and thanks for watching 107 Facts About Fortnite. Do you prefer Battle Royale or Save the World mode? Who's your favorite husk? Comment below and let us know. Don't forget to click the bell icon to become part of the notification squad, and if you like getting more from your games, subscribe to the leaderboard, your home for video game fact.